Hey, welcome back, folks. Today, we're going to be replacing uh, rotted floor in a mobile home kitchen. Uh, the ice maker leaked, and as you can see, it leaked out towards the dishwasher, and this wood has swelled, and it is pretty unlevel. Well, it was unlevel to begin with, so what I'm going to do he wants to go back with a full sheet of 4x8 plywood, so uh, we bought a 4x8 treated piece of plywood, and I'll be cutting out a 4x8 piece of kitchen floor that will be replaced. And we're going to get the high wear areas in front of the dish, uh, sink, stove, stuff like that, so let's get started. Okay, we've got our square cut out. A little bit more than we need, but better go with a whole piece of plywood than just pieces. So, all this is going to be a new sheet of three quarter inch plywood. Now, when you pry, you try and get the old board up. Um, you're not just prying in the middle because if you're prying on the good side, you're liable to break this or damage it. Um, if you do, just at least make sure you get on a joist. There's our nails. That's it. Well, this is the end of one panel and get another. And another reason you want to use a whole sheet if you can is because it's just stronger than pieces. Um, you know how much blocking everything is, the longer pieces you have, the more surface area you have the stronger it'll be and this is why when we get uh, this off we're going to start blocking in between these joists these areas right here because if we don't then these these areas will be soft these panel edges will be soft and you eventually uh, just wear them out and, and they'll break and be a huge soft spot so we'll come in and block between here these edges so anyway, let me get off here and probably cut me a hole someplace to start prying this up. Now sometimes if I really can't find a good place to to um, start prying, I'll just cut a corner off with saw, make me a little hole, get up in under there. What's crazy is you can see how warped this is. This is still not soft. I jumped up and down on this and it's still not soft. Let's see. You see that how warped that is? That's huge. Beats beats me why that is not soft. But anyway, let's see. And another tip, don't stand on the part you're trying to pry on. That's coming up. This is still really solid. I may have to cut off another foot back here to get to the joist, depending on where the joist is at. So, let's see, it's on it helps you have two people with two bars. You can go along here and just pry this whole thing up. So I'm going to get off here, grab me another pry bar, be my second hand. Perfect example of why you want to set the depth of your cut on your skill saw to just barely go through your um, decking. You set full cut. I will go through electrical lines, plumbing lines, drain lines, no telling what. So, and you can start by, you know, most of it's three quarter inch around, maybe a little bit more. And I start at three quarter inch. I'll do a test cut where I'm pretty sure there's no line, uh, electrical or plumbing lines. Look in the cut, see if you're all the way through, and start going by eighth inch until you can look down through the, the cut with a light and see that you're through 
and then leave it. You you do a full cut, and a lot of times you can end up cutting stuff you don't need to be cutting. Okay, <clears throat> now this is how I do my blocking between joists. Um, I, by the way, all my lumber I use is treated. So I, uh, I'll take a 2 by 6 one this way, half of it under the old piece, half of it will be on the new piece, and then come below with either 2 by 4s or 2 by 6s And um, I screw them in, screw them and glue them. Now when I get ready to lay this new piece down, I'll put some PL on this and the joist and that will be how I block my edges. Some people like their blocking between their joist edge up like this. They're gonna say, oh, it's the strongest that way. Well, it is the strongest, but it's not necessary when you're dealing with 14 and a half inches. By the way, you wanna measure every space, never just measure one and think they're all gonna be there's almost an inch difference between the spacing of the joists through here. So I have to measure every one. Now these here, they're real short. I won't put no blocking between those. Over here, I will. So get these blocked up, and then we'll be ready to lay our plywood in place. Now, another tip. If you have problems, now you can make these ahead of time. Like I say, measure each one, put them up there and screw them, or what I do a lot of times is put my piece here, I uh, my flat piece, I measure about a sixteenth more than what the width is, slide it up there, and if it doesn't fit with friction, then you can always put a screw in the top to hold it in place, and put your blocking, slide it up tight beneath it, and then, then screw them to the uh, studs. And if you're blocking, if you're having trouble holding your blocking in place while you screw, screw the uh, uh, you know your sport blocks in you can screw a long screw from the top down to hold them in place and then screw them so it works very well this home has this type of blocking other places i've done about seven eight years ago still solid floor so this will be solid after i get it done uh, there it is all ready for the Sheet of plywood. Will it fit? We're fixing to find out. Okay. Got our first scab in place. This is going to. Uh, this is what uh, the new plywood will sit on. Um. I always make mine longer so they go up under here. Each side kind of helps support. You cut it. Plus, when you bring it up against the bottom of these, it'll pretty much automatically be flush. Make sure you put the crown up. And I put uh, screws or nails about every foot long through here. Some PL to help glue it to the sister at the, the joist. And this one's ready to go. You don't have to use PL, but I do. It's just a little something added. I overcut it down here. See the gap right there? I missed the joist. I needed eight feet anyway, so I really didn't have a choice unless I wanted to cut the um, plywood short. I could have done that, but I was thinking I was going to land. I measured from this joist up here, and I should have landed right the side of it but I didn't but anyway that's it near here and there now so you have to support these edges <laughs> and I am cutting this out up here but not back this far so what I did was cut me a two and a half piece of um, two by six six inches back here two feet up here reach down and put some PL which is by the way PL is basically subfloor glue so glue to here run my uh, six screws in through here this side to hold it and that will give this edge some support because if you don't 
if you don't support your edges like this, they will break on you. They will they start giving a little bit, and then they eventually they'll just break down. Um, I see a lot of people fix their floors, and oh well, that little gap ain't gonna hurt. Well, over a year or so, it breaks down. Then you get a hole in the floor, so you're back doing it again. So go ahead, support your edges. And now I've got to cut blocking for these areas through here. Well, needed a little help going in, but other than that, I mean, pretty good. Okay. Now I have uh, the floor screwed down. I screw uh, about every foot along the edge, both sides, screw it down. This is the advantage of using that 2x6 or a 2x8 for your blocking because now you have a continuous place to screw the edges down uh, all the way around your place where you repaired it. Also go uh, put some, uh, mark the joist before you put your plywood down, mark the joist. So once you put it down, you can put two or three, I put two or three across, about every 16 inches or so in, in the field. And this thing is screwed down and it's cocked, locked and ready to rock dock. Um, going to, to um, glue the old linoleum back down. They're going to refloor several rooms in the house this fall. This one, the utility room, the guest bathroom my bedroom master bedroom i believe and so they said just glue this down and you know we're going to replace it this fall so good me i'll get some contact cement this be on mobile home this wasn't glued down uh typically on mobile home when uh, you know they put the frame it's it's you know factory so they have the frame they put the decking down and they put the flooring down they build everything on top of it and they don't rarely have I ever seen them glue uh, linoleum down uh, or carpet um, if you do find it glued down usually it's been replaced before and somebody else glued it down so I will just hit the edges and maybe a couple places in the field with some contact cement roll this linoleum back out and it'll be ready for them this fall when they um, decide to refloor it so they're going to do that right now this is how you replace a rotted floor in a mobile home uh, it's, it's pretty easy um the problems i see people are when they try to take shortcuts um try to just barely replace a little section always place a larger section than you need um this really just needed maybe a three foot by three foot but it was swole as you can see when I took it out some of it swole back here we just he decided to put the whole new sheet in so uh, another thing is if you get a three quarter inch or piece of plywood and it turns out to be like 23 30 seconds if you have a lip is what I'm getting at and it bothers you now he said he wasn't clear he's not worried about that bowed section under the dishwasher he's he could care less but some of the edges he you know he doesn't care he just wanted a solid floor front the stove to, you know all the high use areas if you have it and you're trying to level it up use what i've used before is the uh composite shims door shims uh, they they won't compress they won't rot if you put a wood shim there it's going to compress over time and you end up with a lip again um, or plexiglass or something that's won't rot or compress um you can shim on top of the joist i uh, did put down pl or the subfloor gluing on the joist before i laid this down i don't know if i showed you that or not but uh, everything you know from the blocking on i use screws and subfloor glue so it keeps it from squeaking on down the road so and, and a lot of good things it just it's just better so Anyway, that's how you replace a rotted floor in a mobile home. Uh, got any questions or anything? Leave, leave it down below. So we'll catch you later on the next one.